What's up guys, welcome back or welcome to your first visit. My name is Matt Samolski, I'm Matt the Car Guy on this channel I do car reviews and today I'm here at Ford of Port Ritchie, Florida with this brand new 2022 Ford Maverick. Now Ford made a lot of noise over social media and internet and the regular media that they're coming up with this brand new small compact pickup truck that's going to cost under $20,000 at $19,990. Well, this particular one is a Lariat that's fully loaded. It's about $35,000. But today I'm going to take you on the tour of it. We're going to check out the exterior, interior, jump inside of it, play with some cool and interesting features, see what powers up this thing. And finally, I'm going to take you for a spin. So if you're ready, let's go. <laughs> Okay, so 2022 Ford Maverick, it's the first compact pickup truck from Ford, but really is it? Now, I ran a comparison between this one and the late 90s Ford Ranger, and I gotta tell you, it's really similar in size. Matter of fact, this one is just three inches shorter than the longest version of the Ranger of the late 90s. It also has more horsepower than the 90s Ranger, which top horsepower was at about 158 horsepower. The base engine and this one will produce 190 horsepower in the hybrid, 250 on the gasoline engine, which we have right here. So really, it's not a first compact pickup truck. They just call it that because everything around it grew. The Rangers became much bigger. The F-150s are huge. And this, if you like the size of the 90s Rangers, you're really gonna like this vehicle also because it's a different construction. Most of the pickup trucks, when you think it's a body on frame, so frame is separate, then they put the rest of it on top of it. They put the cab, they put the bed. That allows for a lot more customization, different bed sizes, different cab sizes. This is a unibody design, which means it's all one piece and it's based on the architecture of the newest Ford Bronco Sport that Ford released earlier this year. Now, it has some similar characteristics of it, but I like it that they made it completely separate. So even if you look at the front end, there's nothing like the Bronco Sport, maybe with the exception of the hood that's kind of similar, although it's also styled after the F-150, I think, with those grooves in the middle, indentation in the middle, kind of makes it the more musculine look. The lights, the reverse letter C, what I like about these lights, the top portion is the LED, the daytime running lights, the bottom portion is the real lights. Why is it important, you ask? Well, it's important because if you're followed by a big, large pickup truck, you usually get blinded because the lights are situated so much higher, so they're in your side of view. With this one, keeping the lights low, it looks like you're followed by a regular car, so the chances of you being blinded by it are smaller. This is your turn signal right inside of this trim that connects the two lights, and this is in that polished aluminum color, the Ford logo right here. And then you have the regular matte black 
grill which you also say it's as radar acc so adaptive cruise control and then nothing unusual in front but it is kind of definitely more rugged looking than the ford bronco sport it does have two hooks in the front and that completes the front portion of it let's take a look underneath the hood and let's see what powers up this what's underneath the hood there are two actually different engine options that are available on that 2022 maverick the standard ones is a 2.5 liter hybrid engine uh, that actually produces about 191 horsepower and then there is this one that produces 250 horsepower and this is a 2.0 liter turbocharged engine 250 horsepower 277 pound feet of torque now this one is made it to an eight-speed automatic transmission versus the hybrid is made it to a cvt transmission there is also a difference that you cannot order an all-wheel drive with the hybrid engine you can however have the all-wheel drive with the non-hybrid gasoline engine so i'm really curious how it drives we're going to check that out in just a little bit and of course as always i have to ding it for that prop stick even though i gotta tell you in the cheaper vehicles this one is not something unusual to have it but check this out look at this windshield wiper fluid how it's distributed and how the cables or the hoses are exposed on it they probably should have done a little bit better job and closing those up but overall not too bad engine compartment okay so on the side it looks like a pickup truck right i love this color the velocity blue metallic one of my favorite colors that ford makes on their pickup trucks really pops it really stands out from the crowd let's check this out a very simple design it looks like a pickup truck right but there's one difference that you can see between this and let's say ranger f-150 or some of the other competitions there is no division between the cab and the bed and that's because it is a unibody construction so all of the mavericks no matter which trim you choose are gonna have the same body they might have different wheels they might have front wheel drive rear wheel drive or well no four wheel drive they might have different engine options but as far as the body they're all gonna look identical which is you know pretty good because it's a five passenger capacity it's got that four and a half foot bed so if you're looking to go into home depot to do your weekend projects or if you love camping or maybe throw your bike in the back this is a perfect vehicle and i think that's what ford is aiming for not the typical you know work truck people that need a lot of cargo capacity in the vehicle but somebody that does something fun or projects as a hobby maybe so let's take a look at the wheel 17 inch wheels on this particular one this is the unique wheel setup for the fx4 package and they do have the pirelli scorpions atr tires on it they're a little bit more aggressive than the regular street tires and that's because it does have that fx4 package mirror caps the same color as the rest of the vehicle it does have the lariat right on this trim piece right here as far as getting into the vehicle you do have a keyless entry system you can also access this by basically lock it by touching the door handle or sticking your hand inside of the door handle to unlock it and if you forget your key but you know the combination on that keypad you can also access it this way let's move on to the back because there's some cool features right on the bed and here you can see that there's this plastic trim that basically is on the side of the bed as well as right here so you don't see that on many pickup trucks but Ford figured that since a lot of people are going to be transporting stuff and maybe putting stuff on top of it, um, that there is a possibility of scratching the back of the cabin. And that's why they put this plastic cladding on here. So we'll just check this out in the back. It looks like a real pickup truck. Not that it is, and but this is not aimed for the real pickup truck people. And I, I start liking it more and more as I walk around this vehicle. Big visible lights you can see those red lights from a distance and they really pop especially with this color right here ford logo maverick that's spelled out in the back gate you can see there's a tow hook hitch right here now standard towing capacity is 2,000 pounds if you want to unlock the full towing potential with the optional towing package you can tow up to 4,000 pounds which is really really good for the vehicle in its class what's also pretty cool it does have 1500 pounds payload that you can stash into this four and a half foot bed 
Let me give you a close-up of it because there's some cool features in there too. And so let's look at this bed. Four and a half feet is not too long, but it's just enough to put your camping gear in it. Maybe if you go to Home Depot, put some stuff in here. If you're going biking or carrying your sport gear, you can just throw in here. Don't worry about it. Now this particular one has been equipped with the optional tough ray in bed liner. So I mean this one is not standard as far as coming with the Maverick. What's interesting about it, look at this gate right here. I mean it's pretty long, right? And you can actually use it to extend the bed a little bit. As a matter of fact, Ford gives you that option. You see this little hook right here. You can basically undo it, okay? We're gonna see if I can do it with one hand. We can undo it and put it right on top of here. And what it does is that gives you the extra protection from the stuff that's in your bed from rolling around. Okay, you can add some other accessories to it too, but this comes standard on all of the Mavericks in here. What else do you have on this gate? So if you're doing a lot of like tailgating, you, you have two bottle openers in here, which might be dangerous depending on what type of bottles you're opening, but if it's beer, don't drive after you've had a few. Okay, so what's on the side of it? AC 120 volt max, 400 watts max. So this one can power up some serious equipment. So if you're on the job site, you can actually use that. It does have LED light, which you can turn on or off in here. And then you have the tie downs for the bed, you have two in the back, then you have this track right on the side in here that you can still, you have different tie downs and you can adjust it. Now, if you're not sure of how it all works, remember that little QR code inside? Well, there's another one in here, so you can scan it with your phone. It takes you to a bunch of videos of what you can do actually with this bed. It gives you ideas as far as accessories and stuff. And this one has an additional storage compartment in the back. Now, now, if you look up there, it also has the third brake light, regular antenna, and it does have a little window that slides open to allow a little bit more air coming into the cabin. So pretty nice setup for a little pickup truck. Okay, so as far as the roominess in the back seat of this vehicle, I like it. I mean, I, it, I have this seat adjusted to my regular driving position and I was kind of worried that I won't be able to fit in the back. But because this front seat is very uniquely contoured, I'm really able to put my knees and still have about an inch left between my knees and the back of the seat. The only problem that I have with this is that it doesn't adjust and you have to kind of sit upright. So for the shorter trips, it's not a problem. It's the problem when you're gonna take a longer trip and you have to be the passenger in the back. But nevertheless, it is a small size pickup truck and it does have tons of room on the interior of it. I'm actually very surprised of how much room it has. And the interior on this particular one is absolutely amazing. Let me show it to you. Okay, so let's check out the interior of this vehicle. We'll start with the door right here. This is a super cool design. I gotta tell you, this is something very unique. I haven't seen door handles like this or anything like this. I love this bronze trim with those exposed bolts in here. And uh, right over here, there's a little separation, but then you have the armrest. Now the armrest might be a little bit too short if you ask me, but that's just uh, something that they did. Okay, so three different colors. Actually, you have the dark gray, you have the light gray, you have this bronze trim, really nice, it separates it, makes it look cooler. But what's other cool feature in here, you have some storage in here. You also see, I don't know if you can see, this bottle shape right here, which means you can put one and a half liter bottle of pop in here and actually have it inside the cup holder. So when I was telling you about this seats, they're being contoured a little bit different. See how indented this portion of the seat is. That allows you for more room in the back. While we're here, let's check it out. You have a seat back pocket right in here. And then you also have the USB-C, USB port and the regular household power outlet, which is a very cool feature. All right, so let's take a look at the seats. Absolutely love this trim. They call it desert brown trim. And this is a combination of brown and black. 
the leather feels really really good on this vehicle it looks really good it does have this contrast stitching now we're looking at a vehicle that's non-luxury and it still have all of this which is awesome so you can see that the seats move i'm going to show you that in a second but you also have this console right here that basically with the cup holders and that can be uh, moved away so all right so this is what you have in the back. All right, you can open this up and you have a bunch of electronic components. You have a speaker for your Bang & Olufsen stereo. This is actually, the speaker is right there. And this I believe might be an amp or something. Um, and so there's a lot of electronics in here, but that's not the only cool part about it. Check this out, okay? We can lift this portion of the seat up and let's check out how much more room we have it's like a trunk underneath these seats which gives you tons of room in here and if you're wondering how to use it guess what Ford thought about it too flags bad so there's videos of how people load this stuff inside of the um, cargo bed as well as inside of these storage compartments on the web you, all you have to do is just scan the qr code for options well, we're going to do the sound test of the door let's check this it's actually pretty darn good i'm surprised uh, but you know let's take a look at the door the trim is the same as on the back i really like that bronze and then the usual suspects in here you have the window mirror and controls right here you have a lock and unlock on the side again tons of room inside of here you can put that bottle in here as well and store some other objects in the very bottom of these door now bang and all of a sudden this vehicle has it the speakers wasn't really expecting it in the vehicle in this class now driver seat has the electric adjust the passenger seat unfortunately it is manual but also it is also manual on a lot of uh, competitors take a look at this seat i really like the leather the feel of the seat the depth of the seat and the width of the seat it really fits me really really well and i'm gonna jump in there in just a second to show you the rest of the interior but let's see what, what else we have here so you have the light controls right on the side you have your dimmer and then you have your gate light on the side and we're gonna jump inside check out the rest of this interior okay so let's get this party started and let's check out the interior of it we're gonna start it up before we do that i want you to see the key standard ford key now this is a keyless push button start on this vehicle and on the key itself you have lock on lock remote start and panic button and you do have ford in the back so in the it, differences between like the bronco and bronco sport ford is not labeling it as maverick everywhere else but rather there's a ford maverick okay the way you start it press the button the start engine button is located at the bottom on here so you can hear this typical ford chime and we were able to hear a little bit of that bang and all of a sudden, but I'm gonna try it a little bit later. So let's take a look at what do you have with this Maverick. First of all, I gotta show you the dashboard on it. It does have different dimensions. It's flat, but it also has some nooks for storing other stuff. This is probably not very functional in Florida as this gets really hot. No matter what you put in here, it's either going to melt or it's going to be damaged. See, you have the Bang & Olufsen stereo. This is the speaker that's right in front. And then you have this little hood over your instrument cluster. Now, this is hard plastic. I wish Ford started using a little bit more of a soft plastic materials it would just feel so much better it looks so cool but it feels a little plasticky if you ask me love that trim that trim continues on the door handles the same colors the leather the bronze trim with the exposed nuts in here bolts in here you have the regular glove box underneath here and then you have your instrument cluster this uh, digital stack we're gonna look at this in just a little bit but we'll start with the steering wheel multifunction steering wheel so you see ford logo actually steering wheel feels good to the touch is the right size in my opinion and it is leather wrapped steering wheel so on the left hand side you see there's volume controls there's cruise control controls the lane keep assist and then on the right hand side you can control what's going on 
in the instrument cluster and select it and all that kind of good stuff. So we're going to take a look at this now. So instrument cluster, you have the tachometer on the left, you have the speedometer on the right. If you go for the hybrid options, the base one, you will not get the tech, you'd rather get this power display and say where the power comes from. As soon as the hybrids become available, because there's been a delay with releasing the hybrids, I'm going to come back and do one for you as well. So if you go to the main menu, you have a display setup and then you can go through different options okay you change the measurement units if you'd like to okay and then they go back to the main screen and you can toggle through different screens that are available so here is your tire pressure wow it's over inflated on one you have your regular trip meter so 35.6 miles that's the total mileage on this vehicle actually 41 is but that trip 13.7 miles per gallon which is not true because this vehicle should get 25 average 22 in the city 29 on the expressway with hybrid you get even more but it's not bad at 25 on the pickup truck that's not bad at all what else do we have in here so radio tire pressure trip and then your average miles per gallon that's all you have you can also have this this displaying in kilometers so somebody changed that from miles per hour to kilometers per hour all right so this is your instrument cluster let's move on to the infotainment system now that was 6.5 inch screen right in between the two gauges in here this is an 8 inch screen with one of the big complaints that I have about this. What in the world is this supposed to be? It looks like they have this bezel right here that is made for the bigger display, which this one doesn't have, and they didn't know what to do with it, so they put a divider and put something in here. But you can't put your phone in here because it's going to fall out. Um, I mean, if you're a smoker, you might put a pack of smokes in here, but that's about it. And then you have the 8-inch display. This is the base display, and we've seen some of them on other Fords. I do have it set up and connected to my phone right here, and the base thing is your radio, your uh, compass, and then you have your audio, so you have the different options for audio, phone, apps, find mobile apps okay so it's looking for my apps oh interesting okay different settings so you can adjust that so it's fairly simple okay as far as uh, the display on here there's nothing too crazy um, does have automatic um, updates Ford pass connect vehicle let's see what it does so rear occupant alert, which is really nice. It actually, I'm, I'm glad that a lot of manufacturers are using that. Before you exit the vehicle, it will give you a warning. Hey, check your rear seats. Make sure there nobody is left behind. Camera settings, enhanced park aid, rear view, camera delay. Okay, so we're going to leave that. Ambient light, it does have. Let's do the brightness all the way. We're probably not going to be able to see that but it's good to know that it does have it and uh, door keypad uh, code so you uh, create the key, delete the personal keypad code you must first enter the factory code so if you are getting one make sure you do that and you write it down because there's so many people that are stranded somewhere without access to the vehicle and this is a great option to have if it comes equipped with it use it all right so uh, we're gonna get out of here and uh, android auto apple carplay it is wired it's not wireless so I mean that would be a nice improvement to have if it was available with the wireless Apple CarPlay Android Auto this <laughs> is a big no-no but it is available with the larger screen as well so it's gonna use the same bezel so underneath here you have your volume tune you have your shortcuts for the radio and then we're moving down here so you have your electronic dual zone climate control and all the buttons that you need for that you also this is a lariat package so it's equipped with the heated seats as well with the heated steering wheel not a huge option here in Florida but uh, a lot of people up north must like it so this is 
the opener for the this is the window opener for the back so if you want to open that sliding window in the back cab that's where you do this is your usb port now it is equipped with the wireless charging so you put your phone in here and you can charge it up and see right now it says 90 percent so the phone is charging even through the case which i'm surprised okay and then at the bottom of here you have another interesting feature of this vehicle you actually can put this phone like this and watch videos i guess no don't do it while driving there's enough distracted people on the road but this is basically what it's for you can set your phone up like this and actually look at it for directions or anything else that you might want what also you have in here you do have your gear shifter so this is a turn twist dialog gear shifter so you have your parking you have your reverse neutral drive low mode in here and um, it is actually pretty cool to the touch because it's wrapped in uh, rubber so it's really easy to twist and then you have your cup holders on the side another useless in my opinion opening for i'm not sure what and then you have another storage in here all right so you have the electronic parking brake and then you have a bunch of different options in here so basically you have three different driving modes in here you have the eco you have snow you have sport and that's how you select it so when you press this button okay you got normal tow haul slippery mud ruts sand normal tow slippery and go back in that and it gives you that cool animation with here now when i put it in the normal mode once i left the vehicle in the mud ruts mode and it couldn't get out of its own way on the expressway so what else we have here this is your traction control this is your park hold you can turn that on or off automatic engine you can turn that feature off if you don't want it and hill descent assist that's another button that you have over here and then you also have another storage right underneath this what else do you have here at top there's really not much that you can see i mean other than the regular lights then the sunglass holder there's no sunroof and nothing else to see here folks now i'm interested how it drives and i hope you are too so let's take it for a spin guys before we take this for a spin let's take a look at the different options that are available before we do that i just gotta tell you one thing i like this thing more and more the more i look at it the more i play with it i think they've done the nice job designing this truck for people who really don't need this big pickup truck but still want to have the ability to go to home depot to go you know camping to go mountain biking and not dirty up the cab because you have all of this in the back so i think they really did a nice job now as far as the equipment of it this one is fully loaded when you might see in advertising the maverick starts at 19.995 and that's true however i challenge any of you to let me know if you actually have ordered or bought the base 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 xl model because that's what it is no options xl 19995 plus destination xlt is the second trim level which starts at 22280 and that gives you standard options that are not available on the xl so you might want to look into that and most of the people will probably be leaning towards this now lariat which is the one that we're sitting in right now it starts at 25490 but the way that this particular truck is equipped is over thirty-five thousand dollars so it's a lot it's a huge spread almost sixteen thousand dollars spread between the base one and where we're sitting in right now but this one has the lariat package it's got the luxury package it does have the fx4 package it does some premium equipment group i don't want to just go over every single feature of it because this video would be two weeks old uh, two weeks long however what you want to do is you want to go on the ford's website and check it out see what you want to order as far as what fits you and uh, build it configure it this way now two different engine options it's also available with the two-wheel drive which is front wheel drive because it sits on the bronco sports platform so it's not a real wheel drive but front wheel drive or it's available with the all-wheel drive 
Now, if you order the hybrid, you cannot order all wheel drive version. So you're stuck with the front wheel drive and that's good enough for you. That's plenty, that's fine. Also with the two wheel drive uh, version, you get a different suspensions in the back. This one is fully independent. The one in the front wheel drive is not. So, I mean, there could be a different feel of the vehicle as well. So my suggestion is if you have a dealerships near you that might have one or both of them test drive either one or both of them and see which one fits you better so one over the pricing let's quickly take a look at this rear view camera and i like that with fords it takes up the entire screen a lot of manufacturers do it where the camera just uh, takes up portion of the screen this one takes up the entire screen the only two options is zoom in and zoom out and you also have this little icon of a vehicle right here and that basically just uh you know is a parking sensor so if you get closer to something it's going to start beeping and now we're going to take a look and see the turning radius of plenty of parking spaces in here we have they're painted on too and we'll see how tight this is Turn it all the way. One, two, three, four. Just touching the fourth line, just over four. So it's really nice and tight. They did a excellent job as far as the turning radius in here. <laughs> I dig it, I like this. A little pickup truck here. Let's go. See, there's a few little bumps in there, but nothing too crazy. But, uh, you know, sometimes when you have this twisted axle torsion beam, whatever they call this rear suspension, that is not independent, you'll, you'll have this skip. Like when you go over that, you don't feel it with the independent one because both wheels work independently. Now, we're gonna accelerate it in just a little bit, but the overall feel of the truck visibility is great comfort there's so much room in here i'm six feet tall i have i don't know seven inches above my head before i would hit the roof so plenty of room for even bigger people seats are super comfortable now you know some of sometimes you get in the car and the seats don't fit you this ones are actually made for comfort uh, they're not much made for sports seats that will not keep you in place or anything like this and then we're going to take that on the road see the acceleration let me check one more thing i'm going to hit the brakes and see how it reacts with the braking Okay, so it does take a little bit of a nose dive, but it's not bad at all as far as the braking and it feels very responsive. Um, also the steering wheel, that's another uh, portion that I like about this truck because when you uh, have get in the truck or car or anything like this and then you go take the steering wheel and it's either too tight or too loose, I mean, that's a problem. This is a great combination. It is right in the middle so it's not too loose it's not super super soft steering uh, it gives you the ability to feel that you're turning but at the same time it is very nice and precise so there's uh so far you know there's a lot of things that i like about this truck one thing i want to tell you though i did test the stereo i'm not sure if i can turn that off for a second here um, it is the premium stereo that uh, is banging all of a sudden and it's a great stereo system however my only complaint with it and i played around with it a little bit as far as uh, putting the settings right is that it still has stereo is great the speakers are great i'm sure the amplifier and all of that is awesome and the high quality let's accelerate here for a second all right so let's see I like it. <laughs> this is very capable little pickup truck. It really goes when you accelerate. So definitely acceleration is not an issue. And you can feel the gear shifting, but it's not you know, jerky. It's a very smooth shifting as far as the gears on this eight speed automatic transmission. But going back to the stereo system, what I didn't like that it still felt like I was in the barn. And that tells me that 
the speaker, the insulation, the sound insulation and the location of the speakers might be such that it gives you that, uh, it gives you that sound like you're in the jar or like in the barn. So um, even though it's a high-end stereo system, at the higher volume, it really doesn't do anything to me. So, I mean, I don't think I would spend the extra money to, to pay for the Bang & Olufsen stereo, but that's just me. So to sum it all up, guys, I mean, I really like this little truck now for someone who's looking for uh, something to go camping or like we mentioned for all the other activities it's a perfect combination the only thing that i can the only uh, vehicle that i think it competes against is the new santa cruz which is also a really nice vehicle and they're in the same price range now the santa cruz has a little bit higher msrp starting msrp and it's not available in the hybrid however it does have more options to start with but the ending price somewhere in the mid 30s such as this one which basically makes them a good competitors so definitely check it out if you haven't already thank you very much for watching guys i hope this was helpful i hope you learned something from this video if you like videos like this consider checking out the rest of my channel hit that little button at the bottom that says subscribe on it give me a thumbs up to build me up and i will see you in my next video cheers